Okay, uh, back to our regular programming. Um, the Secretary General, as we've told you a number of times, is in Chile to attend the meeting of the Chief Executive Board for Coordination of the United Nation. Uh, this afternoon, he will have a bilateral meeting with the President of uh, Chile, Gabriel Boric, uh, and that will be followed by a joint press uh, encounter. That will be around 6.45 p.m. here in New York. Uh, for those of you who are interested, it will be, uh, it should be up on our UN Web TV platform. Uh, last night, you saw we issued a statement in which uh, the Secretary General expressed his deep distress at the news of the hundreds of lives lost and many others affected by the heavy flooding in Burundi, in Kenya, Somalia, and Tanzania, as well as other parts of East Africa. The United Nations and its partners are working closely with national authorities to address the humanitarian requirements. The Secretary General stresses that the United Nations stands ready to offer any additional assistance that may be needed during this very difficult period. The Secretary General is extremely concerned about the impacts of El Nino triggered extreme weather, which risks further devastating communities and undermining livelihoods. Uh, in that regard, the um, Martin Griffiths, our emergency relief coordinator, has released $13.5 million from the Central Emergency Response Fund to shore up uh, support to address El Nino-induced uh, disasters in Southern Africa. The funds will go towards uh, providing food, cash, support for irrigation systems, drought-resistant seeds for farmers, for planting, among other assistance. This latest allocation brings the total amount earmarked to confront El Nino crisis globally to more than $60 million. And staying in the region and turning to Madagascar, we have a humanitarian update for you on the response following the passage of tropical cyclone Gaman in late March. Uh, the storm impacted more than 530,000 men, women, and children. Hundreds of houses and schools and health centers were flooded and damaged. We continue to support the government of Madagascar-led response, focusing on the health uh, response due to the risk of epidemics following the storm. Humanitarian organizations have provided medicine, mosquito nets, water purification products. Uh, they're also providing training on water treatment. The education sector is also a priority as it is the last semester of school. Humanitarian aid organizations have distributed tents uh, for temporary classrooms for students. Our colleagues from OCHA say that access to some areas remains challenging as the national road connecting the northeast, one of the most affected regions, is still cut off. Both humanitarian supplies and staff need to be transported by sea or, uh, or air, which, as you can imagine, increases the cost of the response. Humanitarian partners are calling for additional funds to support relief efforts. The flash appeal for Madagascar, which will require $90 million this year, is under 13 percent funded with only $11.5 million in the bank. Moving to Sudan, our humanitarian colleagues say they are deeply concerned about the humanitarian crisis that is ongoing there. A group of 10 emergency directors from UN agencies and non-governmental organizations wrapped up a joint mission to Sudan today to sound the alarm over the absolutely devastating situation across the country, including catastrophic food insecurity levels and a growing risk of famine. Humanitarians urgently need to expand access across conflict, conflict lines and borders the, to reach people in need wherever they are. They also need more resources. Despite generous pledges made in Paris about two weeks ago at the conference there, the Sudan humanitarian appeal remains only 10 percent funded. Our colleagues are deeply disturbed by the situation for civilians in and around El Fasher, where clashes and tensions have escalated. We're particularly alarmed about restrictions on civilian movements and reports that civilians are being attacked and robbed while attempting to flee south from the capital of North Darfur State. Fighting in and around the city has already cut off humanitarian access to civilians who desperately need assistance. If the violence in Al Fasher escalates, more than 360,000 people will be deprived of food assistance and livelihood support, and more than 100,000 will lose out on shelter assistance. It could also have impact, <coughs> a negative impact on our humanitarian access to other states in the Darfur region. <coughs> and just to flag that tomorrow, Friday, 
We will be joined uh, virtually by Lenny Kinsley from uh, Nairobi. She is the uh, World Food Program spokesperson for Sudan, and she will brief you in more detail on the situation in Darfur and Al Fasher. Turning to the situation in Gaza, our humanitarian colleagues continue to warn about the catastrophic impact that a potential ground invasion in Rafah could have, uh, especially on the civilians and obviously on the aid operation that supports those civilians. Rafah is at the heart of our Gaza humanitarian operations. It, it, it is a transshipment point for life-saving assistance that arrives in Gaza from, Rafa, from the Rafah and the Karim Shalom crossings. It is where dozens of aid organizations store the life-saving supplies they deliver to civilians across the Gaza Strip. Among other things, our colleagues from the UN Population Fund operate clinics for sexual and reproductive health at field hospitals in Rafa. UNICEF and partners are providing outpatient treatment for acutely malnourished children at more than 50 sites in Rafa. The World Food Program and its partners are distributing nutrition supplements to children under five and pregnant and breastfeeding women in Rafa. Three of UNRWA's eight health centers in Gaza are in Rafa. They provide primary care, medication, vaccination, pre- and post-natal services, and wound dressings for injured patients. Most importantly, there are hundreds of thousands of civilians who fled to Rafa to escape bombardment, famine, and disease. For them, a ground operation would be more, mean more suffering. Civilians must be protected, and international humanitarian law must be respected by all. Um, Moving to Syria, where we are told that extreme weather there has left thousands of people in the northwest of the country in urgent needs of tents and other shelter support. In Idlib and northern Aleppo, nearly 2,500 people were heavily impacted by the rainfall. Some 250 tents and more than 180 shelters were damaged. Our colleagues at OCHA uh, say that among those working to assess the damage and our partners on the ground, are distributing tents, mattresses, blankets, insulators, and other assistance. We, along with our partners, have been providing uh, to work, have been working, excuse me, to move some 800,000 men, women, and children in northwest Syria to safer and more durable shelters. That's while um, recurrent flooding, amid recurrent flooding since the start of the year. Uh, however, the funding shortfalls are challenging efforts to provide support in the area. Just 8% of the $1.4 billion needed for the cross-border humanitarian response in northwest Syria is in the bank. Uh, and moving up to Europe and Ukraine, the humanitarian coordinator for the United Nations in Ukraine, Denise Brown, was in the Kharkiv region in the east of the country today, where she um, condemned the recent wave of attacks on the region. Attacks have also continued for a third day in a row in Odessa, causing dozens of civilian casualties and damage to civilian infrastructure. That's according to what local authorities are telling us. Our humanitarian partners have warned about the impact of the increase in attacks on education institutions and health facilities in recent months. In the first four months of this year alone, nearly 90 schools were damaged in attacks across the country. That's what our partners are telling us, and humanitarian organizations are mobilized and, uh, and are mobilized and are providing emergency repair materials, psycho psychological and legal assistance to those who need it. Uh, almost lastly, the Secretary General's personal envoy for Cyprus, Maria Angela Holguin, uh, will undertake her third visit to Cyprus, and that will take place on the 7th to the 14th of May of this year. During the visit, she is expected to meet with the Greek and Cypriot Turkish, Greek Cypriot and the Turkish Cypriot leaders, um, as well as a broad range of additional uh, interlocutors. Before the visit to Cyprus, she traveled to Brussels for meeting with European Union officials, as well as to other relevant capitals. Uh, and today is World Tuna Day. <laughs> Don't roll your eyes at me, E.D. Letterer. Uh, the fish has some amazing qualities. It's rich in omega-3, contains minerals, proteins, and vitamin B12, among other advantages. However, it is threatened by the overwhelming demand. And I'm part of that overwhelming demand, because I love tuna. But we need to uh, fish uh, sustainably. This day highlights the importance of the conservation of management of tuna. Edie, the big tuna. <laughs> Thank you. I have to say I do like tuna. Yes, exactly. 
um, on, on Sudan and what's happening around El Fasher, mm -hmm. can you tell us what Mr. Lamamra is doing? Um, is he trying to uh, get a lot of the key players to, uh, together with the two generals to, to actually try and bring an end to um, at least this offensive and uh, the broader conflict. I mean, that, that's the aim. Uh, he has been talking to various parties and those who have influence over the parties, and he will continue uh, his activities in that regard. Can, can we get a, a more um, granular update on, on yes, what's, what's happening? With him. With, with that, yep. um, thanks. I'll come back later. <laughs> okay. Joe, then Anade, then Benno. Uh, yes, first, uh, in honor of this International Tuna Day, I, I'm going to have tuna casserole tonight, so Excellent. just wanted to let you know. Um, anyway, on a more serious note, uh, there is a ceasefire proposal on the table, uh, and Israel's <coughs> offer uh, of a six-week ceasefire uh, reducing the number of hostages it is demanding or asking to be released and proposing a much larger number of Palestinian prisoners to be released. It's been described as very generous by the U.S. and the U.K. Does the Secretary General have any message for Hamas uh, to accept this proposal? So far, um, indications are that it is uh, reluctant to accept the proposal. Well, I mean, you're listing uh, a proposal that you know, the Secretary General has not seen. We are not a party to these uh, negotiations. We've seen different variations of it in, in the press. The Secretary General's message, as I think as he delivered it on, uh, on Tuesday, is for the parties to, uh, to agree to a humanitarian uh, ceasefire, to agree to release all of the uh, hostages, to agree for greater humanitarian access. So we are not party to the agreement. We have not seen the proposals, we've seen press reports. Uh, we, want, we want to see an agreement, and I think he was much more eloquent than I'm being in his expressing his opinion on Tuesday. But um, it looks like, from all reports, it is Hamas that's standing in the way. Well, I, I, Isra I mean, we're, Israel we're, has made several offers, we, uh, and Hamas so far has I, said no unless it gets its way. So I, I mean, it's, it, we're basing this discussion on press reports, unless you have seen the agreement. I have not. So I can, since I don't have the details of it, I'm just reiterating what the Secretary General has said. Benno. Was Thank you, Benno. I'd like to have some authority here. No, you I'm going to go with Benno. Benno. I know, I know. I changed my mind. Benno, <laughs> go. Go. Uh, go ahead. No, go. No, go. Go, Benno, go. No. God, I feel so bad. Thank you for bringing me in that situation. Um, uh, Switzerland announced the Ukraine uh, peace summit for 15th and 16th of June. Who will go for the United Nations? Uh, I don't have any details for you to share at this point. Uh, and the second thing, the EU wants to pay Lebanon around a billion euro to stop migration f of uh, Syrian refugees to uh, Cyprus and the EU. Do you have any comment to this? Look. I think it is whatever decisions are taken on efforts to, uh, you know, I would term, I, I would use the term, uh, manage the flow of human beings, whether they be migrants or refugees, uh, needs to be done in a holistic, uh, in a holistic manner that deals with the countries of origin the countries of destination, and the countries of transit. So you mean this is not holistic I've, enough? I haven't seen all the details. I'm just stating my principles. Uh, Nade. Hi. Thank you, Steph. Thank you, Verno. Um, I wanted to follow up on Edie's question. She asked about any progress has been made with negotiations between the RSF and the SAF on completely stopping the fighting and a ceasefire. But my question is, after today, you said that 10 emergency directors from mm -hmm. UN agencies mm -hmm. had a mission today. Has there been any progress on maybe just cross-line negotiations on just aid access, maybe not a whole end the, of the conflict? I, as far as I know, there's not been sufficient progress. Uh, Maggie, then Michelle, then Deji. Uh, 
following up on Sudan, where in Sudan did the 10 emergency yeah. directors go? Because it's very hard to move around. So do you know where they went? No, I do not, but I will get you an answer shortly. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead. Excellent. Um, sorry, just three quick questions on Gaza um, aid. Um, has the UN had any communications from Israel on how imminent an assault on Rafa might be? Uh, we are not privy to military, uh, their military operations. They gave a warning in October of when they were going to go in. You've had nothing. Okay. Um, and on the pier, the US-led mm -hmm. pier, has there been any kind of, has the UN resolved how what their involvement will be in helping Th deliver those the aid? <coughs> Excuse me, those discussions are also ongoing. And then last question, um, from Rafa, how many people has the UN been ob observed leaving in recently? L leaving? Like has, leaving Rafa and leaving Gaza. Like has there been a um, surge in people leaving ahead of... Going any, back north? Well, well, or leaving, yeah, I, crossing into Egypt, maybe. Uh, I don't have those numbers. I'm not aware that we've seen any large movements of, uh, of people. Uh, Deji, sorry. Yes, uh, a couple of questions, Steph. Starting with Syria, border crossings. Uh, this February, Syrian government uh, grant permission for you to use Arai and Baba Salama uh, border crossings, and that that mandate is due to expire in thir on 13th of May. Mm -hmm. Is there any update on no, the we're, negotiations? We're, as, I think as we, said, uh, as we said last week, we're, our OCHA colleagues are very much in contact with the Syrian government uh, to ensure the continuation of that. But generally speaking, how's the, how's the border crossing uh, operations now? I mean, they're working. They are wor so they're working. No they're underfunded, no but good they're news. working. Yes. OK, good. Yeah. Um, second question. Uh, it's been reported that Colombia might cut diplomatic ties with Israel because of the Gaza conflict. Any positions uh, the, from the Secretary General? The issue of bilateral relations is a bilateral issue. Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. Um, after what happened in the last few hours with the students uh, in California, Will the Secretary General perhaps like to clarify better what he said earlier about the protests that when freedom of expression must be respected and when not? I think, I'm not, I mean, the Secretary General, I think, was very clear and was using very clear words when he spoke about this uh, on, on Tuesday. Um, Alan. Thank you, Stefan. I have a question on the on Ukraine. Today, uh, it marks 10 years since the, one of the milestones that triggered the Ukrainian conflict. I'm speaking of the situation in uh, on May 2, 2014, on the uh, Odessa Trade Union's house. Uh, as you know, uh, that day, national, nationalists mm -hmm. locked up in the house the pro-federalism uh, uh, protesters. And then the house was set on fire. Uh, about 50 people were uh, killed there. Over 200, I guess almost 250 people injured. Still no results for the investigation, uh, no accountability. Is the UN uh, advocating for the proper thorough investigation of this back, tragedy? Back in, uh, at the time, uh, the then Secretary General issued a statement uh, in which he called for swift and conclusive investigation. And since then, uh, our colleagues in the human rights uh, monitoring mission in Ukraine have also issued similar statements. And I would encourage you to check with our, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> check with our human rights colleagues uh, if they've anything had to say. But there've been there've been updates from them uh, calling for an investigation. But nobody was brought to justice since then. There are a lot of cases around the world where we have called for investigations and there's been no accountability, very sadly. Uh, Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, on aid getting into northern Gaza, um, there had been somewhere around 200 trucks getting in per day. Mm -hmm. are, are the 
aid the food, the other items from those trucks actually being delivered, or are they still being held up because of fighting? I mean, a lot, a lot of the, the goods that are able to cross uh, from Israel into Gaza are not in a position to be delivered because of the obstacles that we've been mentioning uh, repeatedly. Abdel Hamid. Thank you, Stefan. I have two questions. One on Egypt. There were 14 young women, mostly women, demonstrated uh, in support of Gaza in front of a UN office in Cairo. They were all arrested. Is the UN involved? Do they follow the case because they were in front of the UN office? If any of you UN official uh, following the case? I, I, will, I will check with our office in Cairo. I was not aware, but uh, whether it's in Egypt or anywhere else, we continue to believe in the right for people to express themselves uh, peacefully. Your second question. The second, uh, yes, yesterday the uh, House of Representatives in the U.S. voted 320 to 91 to adopt the era definition of anti-Semitism, which mixes the criticism of Israel and label it as anti-Semitism. Do you have any opinion on that? No, we don't, we're not in the business of commenting on laws uh, that are going through a, a, a process. It is not, it, as far as I know, it is not passed through all the... Uh, but do you the, agree that criticizing Israel is not any... I have no comment. I, 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 I will just tell, I'm not commenting on the law. I will just tell you that we, that, you know, in terms of the UN, uh, there is no... Um, Member states have not agreed to an official uh, written definition of anti-Semitism, just like terrorism. However, that has not uh, that has not prevented the, secret the secretary general and, and various secretary entities uh, to be consistent in uh, our position against anti-Semitism and his call for in for member states to counter anti-Semitism. Um, I will leave it at that. I wish you a good day, a good afternoon, and my good colleague, Mr. Huck, will be here tomorrow. I'm going tuna fishing. Oh, sorry, one more, uh, one more thing. Uh, the emergency directors were in Port Sudan only.